Okay. Had to wipe a lot of this dirt off this shirt, man, because, man, it was more than lint this week. <laughs> I thought Ohio State was going to be a breeze. Boy, it was more than that. But anyway, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 264. Oh, I can finally breathe again. Cause, man, I was caught up and just choked up with so much emotion last week. But now I can actually do this show with some relief. Woo! What a weekend, man. College football playoffs started, and boy, they took us for a wild ride. We're going to get into it. Uh, tragedy in the NFL this weekend, but turned out to be a, a positive conclusion, hopefully. Uh, the Dunbar Hamlin uh, situation, we're going to get into that. Uh, playoffs are around us, and for some reason, Tom Brady and, and Skeet Rogers don't snuck themselves into the playoff picture. We're going to definitely get into that. Oh, should teams be worried? That's what we're going to talk about. Uh, should the Lakers make a move or should they stay in Pat? Probably going to get into that. Carlos Correa, what's taking this guy so long to sign a contract? Probably going to get into that. Uh, NFL, NBA, whatever we can talk about today, it's probably going to be a fire show. I can already anticipate it. College recaps, NFL recaps, picks. Two, episode 264. That's right. I got it this time. Let's get started. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Red and Red Sport Show. Red and Coach are coming to you live from the ATL. Shout it. While Armani and the good Red Brain are holding it down in the East Coast. We come to Somewhere you on the East Coast. To give you real sports talk because we are real sports fans. We're real sports athletes. Who have what, gentlemen? Yeah. Real, real yeah. sports knowledge. So hang out with your boys, Red, Red, Coach, and Amani for episode 264 of the Red and Red Sports Show. And as is our sports custom, we're turning our numbers attention to the coach, Patrick Thomas, who has been Come on, coach. In New Year, day, baby. dealing with the Pittsburgh Steelers. What you got for us, coach, for 264? The ban will be lifted one day. I tell you, the ban will be lifted. Uh, good morning, everybody. I, I, I Rev, unfortunately, I'm about to take you on a trip in the Wayback Machine and give you a guy, Armani. You may not know him, but you, you just might. You may not know him. He was one at, considered the greatest field goal kicker in NFL history. But did you know? Here's a did you know. He was the two-time NFL passing leader. He also was a quarterback. And he was, like I said, considered one of the greatest kickers. He wore number 64, an odd number for a kicker. And I'm talking about for the then Oakland Raiders, George Blander, kicker for the Oakland Raiders. I had to go in the Wayback Machine today. It's one of the rare times. <laughs> you will not put me in your age bracket. <laughs> you will not put me. You talk about Rev. You might remember. No, I don't remember him. When oh my said, goodness! When you said a kicker wearing number sixty-four, I said I was not living during that era. <laughs> when, when a kicker was also leading the league in passing. No, no, not at all. That's yeah. all you, coach. That's all you, bro. Rev, your thoughts. I'm seeing you. Seeing you. Uh, Give a little expression. What are your thoughts, brother? Well, he definitely went way back with it. <laughs> he, he got in the way back machine. You in the hot tub time machine with that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have mercy, man. George Blander. I, I heard of him, Coach, but boy, I never thought never thought we'd hear him on the show. <laughs> no doubt about it. All right, Coach. Man. You, you went back. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. All right, let's go ahead all and welcome Reverend Night Nation. It seems like our officers are in place this week. Let's oh. give a big shout out to the president commanding the VP to slam the gavel. So the president is in the house. Brother Rasa, good morning to you. He's What's up, Danny? Uh, Vincent Woodruff, the VP, has slammed down the gavel of another fire session of the Red right. Red Sports Show. Dante said Blander was also a QB. I believe that's what Coach said. Yeah. yeah. We just know him as a kicker. 
Uh, he said, I missed it. The coach mentioned the galloping goats. <laughs> Gallop your way on out of here. <laughs> and also the president said, check it in from the board. <laughs> Juggling Bonanza in scratch ankle Alabama. <laughs> I know that on anybody's map. <laughs> there you go to made up towns again. Scratch ankle right. Alabama. Oh, my, my, my. Uh, the prayers, I'm proud to say that it didn't take 15 votes to get me back to my feet. <laughs> Shots fired at McCall. Uh -oh. Shots fired. Boy. I'm was, glad I finally looked at some of that coverage last night because I'd be completely lost. <laughs> yeah. I was talking, they were talking about it so much on Facebook, I had to check out some of it. <laughs> it was definitely a reality show within itself. Yeah. Yeah. People fighting in the city at the state capitol. Who would have the president said it's 100 miles northeast of Mobile Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> He's doubling down on Scratch Ankle, brother. Uh, uh, at, least I, at least we heard of Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, yeah, scratch <laughs> let's, Ankle, boy. Let's jump into it, fellas. Y'all know how we do it. Dope, nope, and cope. We give our best moment. That's what we say, dope. Uh, shake our head moments. We say, no, nope, cope. Something that we're trying to wrestle our feelings around, feeling a little emotional, sad as we cope about a sports moment, <laughs> excuse me, for this week. With that being said, uh, Coach, we'll start with you this week. What are you doping on? Uh, my dope moment goes to one Shea Gilgus Alexander, who some people should know him, but he's finally being recognized by the NBA uh, people, uh, fans, as one of the best players in the league this year. He's actually fourth in the voting this year behind – Jay Morant, Steph Curry, and Luca. So big ups to him coming. He actually had 911,000 votes, which is amazing for somebody who plays in Oklahoma City. So he gets my prop, Shea Gilgis Alexander. Oh, yeah. Ray, what are you doping on? Uh, my dope. Man, honestly, I got so many. <laughs> man, who? All right. Somebody else might choose this one. So I'll go with the other, the other moment. I'm gonna go. My dope moment goes to the uh, Bills Bills medical staff personnel. I can't remember his name right now, but the guy that was very essential in giving uh, and providing the CPR to uh, De Demar Hamlin, uh, that particular guy right there. Dope to you, sir. Dope for knowing what to do at that moment. Dope for being prepared. Dope for saving this young kid's life. Couldn't uh, getting him a pulse again, getting oxygen back in his system to get him time to get him to the hospital and provide other tests and procedures to make sure he's still with us today. So to that medical trainer for the Buffalo Bills, dope, sir. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Amani doping on what? Uh, I'm going to dope on the next head coach, Coach Vine. Um, I mean, even though the Bulls snapped that 12-game win streak the other night, man, they even go – 12 straight. I mean, that was impressive for a young head coach. So, yeah. hey, man, Coach Vaughn, looks like the Brooklyn Nets have found their head coach um, probably for the long term. Looks like Kyrie and Durant are buying into what he's saying. So, big ups to Coach Vaughn, man. Do, keep doing your thing. I like what I'm seeing from the Brooklyn Nets and their head coach. Winning! I am going to take a page out of Red's dope playbook. I am going to dope on the players and coaches of the Buffalo Bills and Cincinnati Bengals standing their ground, not going back on the field after experiencing such a traumatic moment, seeing their colleague, their player, uh, go into cardiac arrest and to try to have players go back and play a game that seems so senseless after that type of situation I have to applaud the players and the coaches for standing their ground saying there will be no Monday night football after this event. So big ups to them. Oh, yeah. All right, Red, what are you noping on, sir? Uh, I'm noping on one, Skip Bayless. Uh, dude, and not for the tweet that got everybody so riled up. It, it was his actions the next day that kind of, kind of confused me i'm like dude why were you sitting on the air trying to discuss topics when every single sports show in america all the sports shows suspended sports topics for that day and what everybody was just devoted and 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 determined 
to find out what was going on. Everybody just decided to stop talking sports and focus their shows on the health of DeMar Hamlin. And this clown, like, look, I, I got respect for Skip Bayless. I don't, his antics don't bother me like they bother most people. But for this particular situation, dude, you sit up here trying to talk sports topics when everybody is focused and worried about this young man, and you sit up there like a fool talking. And now you're not even talking to Shannon because Shannon didn't show up. You're talking to yourself. You and Gene Hale, you sit up there talking to yourself about the Cowboys, this, and other topics that nobody is caring about at that time. All we were concerned about was the health of DeMar Hamlin, and you sit up here like a fool trying to discuss sports topics when nobody wanted to talk sports at this particular time. And they got the nerve to say that uh, the DeMar Hamlin injury is one of the worst things you ever witnessed in sports. Well, I can't tell. Your, your actions don't show it. So for that particular, and I really don't criticize Skip Bayless like most people do, but this particular situation, dude, I'm criticizing you. You look completely foolish and completely ignorant, ignorant sitting up there trying to talk sports when everybody in the sports world was only concerned about one thing and one thing only, and that's the health and welfare of DeMar Hamlin. So note to you, Skip Bayless, oh, uh, they say Shannon was scheduled not to be off the following day. I'm not sure, but I... I'm glad he was off because I don't even think he would have been able to hold his tongue. So, nope to Skip Bayless for that particular thing. Nope. Oh, come on! Amani, what are you noping on, sir? I am noping on one, the college football playoff um, committee. How how can we have a game and nobody can tailgate outside the stadium? Like, that's <laughs> just tradition. Like, how can nobody not tailgate before the game, before people start – going into the game where people actually go out there, fellowship, talk about different things. Like that's just part of the tradition of football is tailgating before you actually go into the game. That's the hype up. So I, I'm open on that. I mean, I just don't think that was, that was a smart idea. All righty. All right. I am open. Along the same line of my dope, I have to nope on the NFL officials for even having the idea to try to get players back on the field and giving them a five-minute warm-up to try to get them to play a game. Yes, it was an important game. Yes, it gave uh, importance to the NBA, NFL playoff picture. But you got to be human. And you got to sometimes stop thinking about money and think about people. And therefore, again, I got to applaud the NFL players and coaches from the Bengals and Bills not going back on the field. But NFL, have a heart. Understand the situation. Make the best decisions if you're truly concerned about players' health. Understand, players' health is not just always physical. There's also called mental health. And therefore, you all were not concerned about the mental health of the players seeing one of their fellow colleagues go into cardiac arrest. So let's upgrade your understanding of health to move from just physical health to mental health as well. No, no, no. Coach, what are you noping on, sir? Uh, I'm noping on one Trevor Bauer. I was confused when the Dolph, Dolph, not Dolph, Dodgers actually brought him back to the team. And then they said, well, we, we're going to look bad bringing him back. And they cut him because that was the thing. I'm like, Trevor Bauer, somebody's going to pick him up. I guarantee you they're going to ignore his ignorance, what he did, his assault, and going to pick him up just because he's a decent pitcher. But if it's me, after what he did, he would be – there would be one word associated with him, former Major League Baseball player. You have got to be kidding. Now, let me pause real quick. Should the Braves pick him up? No. Listen, listen, listen. Okay. Listen now. They already got Ozuna who did the same thing. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. Well, I'm not laughing at the situation. I'm laughing at they kept Ozuna. So they already have a track record of, of, of trying to, to rehabilitize. 
uh, <laughs> certain players. Yeah, and Trevor Bauer on the cheap. A good one year contract, $20 million. They still got Ozuna, Ozuna for two more years unless they can unload his contract real quickly. They'll real probably be able to unload it next year with one uh, year left. They might be able to unload Ozuna next year with one year left. Next yeah, year. Though. After next year. Yeah. After yeah. Next. So, so, Red, are you in favor of them going after Bauer since they already got Ozuna? I, I I wouldn't completely poo poo it, but I would I would have some questions. I would be I would actually be surprised that they would even look his way. But the one thing I can say, the Braves aren't the Falcons. You know, the Falcons don't like the jail bait, but the Braves, like you say, it's baseball. I've seen them go after controversial players before, but not so soon after the controversy. Usually they wait a year or two, but this this would be surprising that they going after him immediately after he's been reinstated. But the dude is a Cy Young caliber pitcher. Somebody's going to pick him up. And whoever pick him up going to have another weapon on their pitching staff. All he got to do is be a good boy. I mean, I hope he ain't foolish enough to get in some more trouble after he just got in this trouble. So, honestly, going, going to Rail's point, Trevor Bauer might be one of the choir boys in Major League Baseball this upcoming season. So whoever get him might get a quieter, more humble, more focused on baseball and just baseball instead of making your controversial statements, doing your controversial antics on the field. Trevor might be one of the most humble guys in baseball this year. So whoever get him might get a steal. On their pitching staff is what is what Rev, I think Rev trying to say. And should the Braves profit from his new change as a man? Well, that remains to be seen, but somebody will. I'm with definitely with you on that, Rev. Somebody's gonna profit from somebody gonna pick him up. You know, <laughs> because the dude, dude just won the Cy Young, what a, a year or two years back? Yeah, well, I, I'm not sure it was two, but I, when he was with when he was with the Reds. Yeah. The yeah. During the um during the, the COVID, COVID season. season, yeah. Uh oh, oh the COVID. Oh no. Oh, coach's like, great championship <laughs> season. Well, uh, you got something to say, COVID champ? <laughs> you know, uh, it's a team that'll get it. <coughs> Yankees. <laughs> oh no, doubt about it. Mets. Too. They don't care. Mets too. I mean, the the thing about it is, really? if if you're not going to ban them completely, then it's fair game because I mean, like. How long do you just continue to poo-poo on a person? The Duke sat out the entire season last year, the entire season. So if the MLB is not going to ban him forever, he paid his dues. You know, that's just like somebody not giving Deshaun Watson another chance after he was suspended for, you know, as many games as he was suspended. So if he's still eligible at some point, He's paid his price. He lost his money. They did not uh, expel him from Major League. So at some point, you got to let him come back. And if if you're going to, you know, uh, let him be in the league, then it's fair game. It's fair game. That's my, that's my, that's my uh, a little opinion. I'm sorry for deviating. Amani, you want to say anything, you're good. No rebuttal. Okay. All right. No. It's on you now. What are you coping on? Oh man, I lost it. Um, what am I <laughs> coping on? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm gonna I'm just cope with. I mean, you. I think Red is dope, and both of y'all had this dope, nope, dope, and um, for your cope. I mean, dope session. Um, you know, I'm just doping with with, um, with Hamlin. I mean, I just hope he's all right. It, and Red, I hope that- come on, to slow down, slow down, slow down. You know, we coping now. Yeah. Okay, because you you mixing up nope, nope. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> my, bad. My, my bad. I, I lost it for a second. My bad. But um, you I want to come back to you? Yeah, yeah. I had to let it come back to me. My bad. <laughs> I go real. I go. Yeah. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I'm let it come oh, okay, to go. Me. My bad. Go ahead, real. <laughs> His joke of freestyle. My bad. I, I lost it. I lost it. I lost it. We are gonna give you a moment to get it back. You know you about to get it. You know you about to get it for Reverend Nation in just a bit. But it'll be all right. Uh, I wanted to say because it was like, man, I don't know if he tried to bring all three moments in one. <laughs> I lost it. All right, I am coping on the fact that we got to hear another few more days of the greatness, in quotes, of Stetson Ben. No, I'm, I'm glad that <laughs> Georgia beat Ohio State. But I just need folks to put things in perspective. And one of the memes that I showed Coach last night puts it <laughs> Stetson Ben is 25 years old. He's <laughs> six year in college. Meanwhile, Josh Allen is 25 years old <laughs> in his fifth year in the NFL. Let's put this <laughs> in their proper perspective. Stetson Bennett is truly a man playing amongst boys. Okay. Yeah. All right, so let's let's slow down, calm down with all <laughs> love. So that, that's my cope moment. Happen to hear all of this Stetson Bennett great talk when this man is 25 years in the sixth year in college. All right. All right, coach, what are you coping on? Uh, I'm coping with the University of uh, UConn ladies basketball team who is really being now, you're talking about injuries, they really being racked with injuries. They only had six healthy players to suit up for the game that they were supposed to play. So they had to cancel the game. They got half the team either injured, hurt, or something going wrong with them. So, they, uh, Gino, this is going to be your year. To, uh, you're a great coach, but you're going to have to pull it out the hat this year, my brother, because you're now in the six healthy players. So, And uh, even the coach had to take time off for an illness. So, UConn women are in serious trouble this year, and if Gino can pull something out of this, he's a good one. So they got to cope with losing players. Red, what are you coping on? Well, not me, but the, the Washington Commanders going to have to cope with Riverboat Run gambling their season away once again. Lord have mercy. What was Ron Rivera thinking putting Carson Wentz back into the starting lineup and just completely ruined the season for the Washington Commanders. I mean, he just threw the season away. Man, come out there and throw three interceptions, three awful turnovers in the game, a must-win game. I don't understand what did he see in Taylor Heineken the week before that made him think he wasn't the guy when everybody on the team – it's for Taylor Heineken, playing for Taylor Guy Heineken, wants Taylor Guy Heineken in the lineup. I mean, Riverboat Run, you probably was the only fool that wanted Carson Wentz in the lineup. And look how you looking now. Completely foolish. I have, Carson Wentz needs to be out of the NFL. He does not need to be any option for any team looking for a spark to get them in the playoffs. Riverboat Run, man, dude, you have made some gambles in sports, but this might have been one of your worst ones. You just completely ruined the season for your team. Y'all was sitting pretty in the playoff picture, and now you got eliminated last week because of Carson Wentz's awful, bye awful bye. performance. Bye Riverboat bye. Run, Lord, and play is coping with you. It might be time for you to retire. Bye-bye. He's allowing this season to explode. Uh, Ronnie, are you ready, sir? Yeah, I think I'm ready. <laughs> All right. We're freestyling now. All right. <laughs> I, I am coping with um, Ohio State kicker. Oh, man, dude. Come on, man. You have all kickers. Listen, y'all got one job. Y'all got one job. One job. We, they, they don't ask you to tackle nobody. They don't ask you to um, read no <laughs> plays out. They don't ask you to do just kick. That's your only job is to kick. Your only job. You don't have to do nothing else. That's all you do on practice during the week. You don't have to go through, go through um, any kind of film session to kick a football, man. 
just make – we got to do – college football got to do better with some of these kickers, man. I mean, goodness, the game <laughs> online and you missed – you just messed up the kick. So, I'm, I'm coping with, 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 with Ohio State fans, man. I, I get it. I get it because, I mean, Alabama, we, we suck at <laughs> trying to recruit kickers. So, I understand. Trust me. Wow, for real. Sound like that kick really bothered our money. <laughs> I was having flashbacks because how ugly it was. Yeah, that was ugly. Sound like our money was really tortured by that kick. Well, he really was. wanted Ohio State to make that kick, didn't you? He did. He did. He did. I know. Point, yeah. I know he did. Point, yeah, I did. I did. What, what after after point, slurping us all what? week long, now he really wanted Ohio State to make a kick. Well, he didn't think Ohio State had a chance, and then when he saw that Ohio State. Was Had a chance. He, he, he switched sides. He want Georgia to get that back. Back. He don't want I, I said. I no. said. That. I said. I, I, I never thought. I never thought he was in on our side. I never believed it. All right. And let's true. See. True colors are being exposed now. Let's see what Red right. Nation talk about. Y'all not gonna like what I got to say about that game either. So I'm just letting y'all know. <laughs> Probably not gonna care. <laughs> uh, the VP is doping on Demar's breathing to remove yesterday. Dopest news in the world for sure. He's also double doping on Reds dope. Uh, he says the Nets will be good as long as the Nets coach doesn't bring a globe into the line. See, here we go. Oh, man. Come on, man. Come on. Double dope on Rebs, dope, solidarity, humanity. When it counted, Joe Black is doping on the Minnesota Vikings defensive tackle, who was a former Bill and has been sending food to the family medical staff that's taking care of his former teammate. Yeah, well, they've, been taking, they've been hooking him up. The president is doping on the NFL coming together for this young man, and especially – the Bengals fans, yeah, the Bengals fans were definitely, uh, yeah. they definitely dope worthy. They handled themselves quite well. The Prez is noping on Skip Bayless. Enough said. The VP noping on Skip Aloysius. Allo- well, how you say that? Allo- Aloysius. 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 Clown. So I applaud Uncle Shay Shay for being able to stick around that clown. What's up, brother Martin? Glad to have you. Uh, the president is coping. At 24, DeMar's NFL career is practically done. I wonder how the CBA addresses issues such as this in regards to finances. That's going to definitely bring out the mm-hmm. whole health care piece. Uh, everything. Going in. What's up, Kelly Kell? Glad Kelly. to be uh, The brother Martin, so I'm glad to hear that DeMar Hamlin is doing better. I'm still praying for the young man. Uh, Joe Black, no, no, Skip Bayless, disrespecting Shannon Sharp for the second time in less than a month. Don't know how much longer Undisputed is going to last. It's going to last because Shay Shay knows he got a huge platform and he ain't letting go of that money. Right, right, right. If I got to deal with Skip Bayless to keep getting those coins, he yeah, ain't got to deal with it. With the club Shay Shay ain't bringing that money in. Like no. He might be an, uh, uh, an influencer. He's doing well with Club Shay Shay. Great show. I love it. But it ain't bringing the money in that undisputed is. So, because you could just tell, let me just do a sidebar. If you saw the episode where Shay explained how he didn't like Skip's tweet, Skip interrupted him. Shay Shay said, go ahead on, start the show. And if you had tuned in after that, you would have never known what happened. Mm-hmm. Because Shannon Sharp just went straight professional mode, didn't allow. Skip interrupted him to stop him from being the professional that he is. So, so exactly. So, I think because Shannon Sharp has experience being fired from other networks, he's understanding that he's on a major platform. And I think Deion Sanders even helped him understand the platform that he has. It will take a whole lot for Shannon to say, I'm gone. It would probably be like a contract dispute, if anything. That would, but but Skip Bayless being Skip is not going to stop him from being on undisputed. Right, real break, real. And I, let, let me just add to that just a little bit. You you absolutely right, real. That's why me and you were laughing this week at all the comments that were coming out to us about, oh Shannon and Skip, he's done with Skip. Oh, this they last show together, and even even Jerome Case, it, it was just funny to us because, like you say. Shannon loves that platform. I mean, Skip Skip is a clown, okay? You're not going to let a clown like that mess up, like I say, the good fortune you've been being able to do by being on this show, the platform that you have every day. Okay, Skip made a little tweet. Okay, Skip interrupted me. Fine, you know what? Forget it. I'll just explain this another time. Let's get on with the show. Correctly. So, so very professional. And it's... And, even during the week and on future shows, you couldn't even tell something had happened. Mm-hmm. So 
I agree with you 100%, real. Shannon is very – Shannon is a pro in this game of life that he playing right here. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good comments. Mm -hmm. Joe Black is coping on another fantasy. <laughs> Over the loss to Ref Mike Clayton Harris, but he know I would have won. There's a possibility you would have won if the Bengals and Bills had finished the game, but we don't know. So Rev got third place, <laughs> and you came before. All right, <laughs> Thomas, the president. Special note on Brother Clowny. My grandmother has always said, "Don't ever <laughs> crap where you lay your head." He missed the memo. Oh no, that was dumb. The VP is coping on Peyton Hills and ICU after rescuing some family members post-swimming accident. Wow, that's unfortunate. Uh, VP said Lieutenant Sonar didn't listen to the Red and Red Sports Show notes for today. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody did, apparently. Just coping on the LeBron versus MJ, MJ debate is tiring. They're both great players. We were witnessed something. that will probably not happen in another 30 years. Love or hate LBJ, he's first ballot Hall of Fame. The, VP says Stetson Bennett is the Danny Almonte. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not Danny Almonte. They brought the drug him up. Series. Wow. All right. Brother Martin coping with his Hawks struggling under 500. Geez. Uh, Kelly didn't know about UConn's situation. The president has named Stetson Bennett Stequavius. Stequavius. <laughs> uh, Joe Black says, stop coming at my quarterback because Hendon Hooker is only three months younger than Bennett. And I've looked it up. When he said it, he's actually true, but they're not hyping up Hooker. And Hooker, old man, too. <laughs> and Hooker had much better numbers than Bennett before he got hurt. And mm -hmm. it sounds about, as the VP would say, sounds about white. All right, let's move on. The VP says Gino is sick as well. Major stuff going up there talking about UConn. Let me be trying to duck my women's game cock team. Joe, <laughs> well, UConn. Uh, Women's basketball, Kelly loved the Stequavius comment. The VP is on fire with his comments today. Riverboat Ron was drinking the Wentz Kool-Aid. Me thinks that it was purple flavored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going to what Armani was talking about, he said that's why kickers aren't real players. Kickers on the sidelines done crochet and crossword puzzles. <laughs> that was a hell of a game, though the kicker needs is Golly, snatched. Oh, wow. Snatched, rather. Rev, my bad. The Steelers are dope helping their tradition and coach. Time is to possibly another win. Mm -hmm. That brought a smile to coaches. No, it didn't, because I got I got something to say about that. Uh, Joe Black is 2023. You're still in. <laughs> <laughs> You're I'm asking for 15 votes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good morning to you, brother Jerome Case. Glad to have you. Oh, boy. The VP said, I'm just to be fine. Uncle Shay Shay ain't going nowhere. Skip me, Shay Shay, and Shannon needs skip. Pity up. Uh, the VP cried out, Good morning. Salutations to Pope. Uh, Shannon was off this week because he helped welcome a grandchild. Uh, he says, Mike, you know Burrow would have gotten those points. Please address me by my show name, Rev. Thank you very much. Moving on. <laughs> my bad, Coach, about your Steelers. No, it's not you, dear. I got it's something else. My cousin, who is a Ohio State Buckeyes fan, he's still salty. His Buckeyes are playing Monday. Just drink oh, yes. playing and watch UGA win this back-to-back -back championship. On no, you, 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 want some, you want some pepper? Huh? I was gonna say this. Marcus wants some pepper since he's no, still. It's solid. okay, Marcus. He, he, right, he, he grew up in Cincinnati. So shake your leg. Shake your leg. He, he had definitely yeah. devastated because he even <laughs> he even messaged me on Messenger. I, I thought my uh, game, uh, Ohio State Buckeyes, were gonna beat y'all, but so glad they didn't. I don't have to hear nothing from Ohio State fans. The job yeah. is still intact, getting ready to do this back-to-back -back action. The wake-up call has been given. TCU will be the ones that will have to deal with the pain that came from Ohio State nearly beating the Georgia Bulldogs. But we'll talk about that in just a second. Thank you all so much, Reverend Night Nation, for sharing your dope and open copes. You all always help make this show what it is. Let's go right on, and let's talk the DeMar Hamlin tragedy. Many of you all definitely know about this situation where – 
DeMar Hamlin, after making a tackle against T. Higgins of the Cincinnati Bengals, he gets up and then just collapses and actually goes into cardiac arrest on the field. And his teammates, along with his opponents, are in shock. You've never seen grown men in mass cry like that and see such terror on the faces of million-dollar grown men football players like you saw on Monday. I'm going to start with Red. Red, what were your thoughts when you either saw or heard about the tragedy that took place? And what are your thoughts as we've heard news of his progress? What say you, Red? Okay. Uh, let me second what you say, though. Much, much props to however one handled the situation. Uh, I We couldn't applaud the medical team, the trainers any more than we already have. So much props to you guys. Uh, we appreciate your service and thank you for being prepared and the things that you do because you guys definitely save lives. So we applaud you and we uh, commend you. Uh, Ralph, well, like I say, initially, uh, we, we, we really didn't know what was going on because there was so many commercials going back and forth. But we, we knew something happened. We knew a player got hurt. But exactly to what extent, initially, we didn't know because they kept going back in and out of commercials. And unfortunately, I was actually – I'm trying to think, where was I? Was I – no, 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 I, okay. I was trying to – I usually be at work. No, I was at home. I was off work, so I was actually watching the game at home. And we heard a guy – I heard a player got up and then he fell back down. So, okay, it went to commercial. They came back from commercial. You saw the ambulance out there. So I said, okay, well, man, I guess he was seriously hurt. And once I heard that they had to perform CPR, wow. I initially was like, wow, CPR? Did he lose consciousness? I mean, he, he must have lost a pulse or something. You start seeing players' faces, Josh Allen faces. You start seeing defensive players crying and whatnot. So now you're wondering, what is going on? Something serious is happening. You see players kneeling down on the field. You see the huddles start to get bigger and bigger. You see them holding hands, everybody kneeling down, praying. So now you're wondering, what is going on? Is, this is something truly serious. And then it started – I didn't. I couldn't remember a moment like this. Uh, the last time I saw a moment was like, like this was when uh, the, the guy from the Detroit Lions, Reggie Brown, was on the field like that. And I think – he had lost conscience and then he had to perform CPR. So that initially brought back those feelings because I knew something serious was happening. You saw the ambulance on the field. You saw players from both teams huddled up together. Now you know something serious is going on. If you see players from both teams all huddled up together, coaches down on the field, folks crying, emotions over everybody's face, you are seriously worried something is going on. I seriously thought somebody's life was either – about to be lost or close to being lost. I mean, that's how serious the situation felt as a fan. So when you initially hear what happened, all only thing you can do now is just start praying and just just hoping, hoping that God has a a much bigger plan for, for this young man because now it's out of our hands. And only thing you, we were doing, I'm sure all sports fans were doing at this moment were just praying, praying, everybody on their knees, praying, using all their prayers and hoping that this young man regains consciousness and he doesn't lose his life at this particular moment, especially on the football field. I mean, who knows how things would have happened had the NFL had to deal with a player's death right there on the field. So thank God that we don't have to talk about that. Uh, like I say, Rev, it was just it was just a lot of emotions, a lot of a lot of unanswered questions, but at the at the end of the day, the only thing we were hoping for was just a positive outcome for this young man, Demar Hamlin. And uh, like you say, the, the, I want to commend the doctors, the medical teams, the Cincinnati medical teams, all everything that everyone did for this young man. Because it seems you seem to have whatever you did, you seem to have saved this young man's life. You took a big sigh of relief out of me, out of sports fans across the nation, because what we did not want was a young man dying, dying on the football field, just dying during the football season. You don't want to have a dark cloud over this football season. You remember the 2022 football season? Yeah, we remember. That's the season that the young man passed away. So we didn't want to have to think about that. But 
like I say, just a tremendous job by all the medical experts, the trainers involved. I mean, we, we couldn't commend them more. Thank God that the young man regained consciousness. Uh, the breathing tube is out of his system. He's up talking. He was uh, talking to teammates, uh, FaceTiming his team yesterday. So the, the best possible – well, he's not up walking. The best possible outcome is he can get back to where he was before the game uh, last week. But right now, it's, it's a lot of positive outlooks – for a situation and thank God that, that, uh, that he's okay, that he seems that he's going to be okay. Uh, and we, and I can commend the medical team and all of the, the trainers and, and, and medical personnel who knew what to do was prepared what to do and, and did everything possible to save this young man's life. I commend the medical department, the medical field. Thank you for being prepared and thank God that this young man is still amongst us. DeMar Hamlin, prayers buddy heart and prayers are with you and your loved ones coach jump in there i mean you look at a situation that could have been a whole lot worse than it was and you know everybody's you know saying and you know the lord is good thank you for bringing that young man back but i'm gonna slide to the side and i'm gonna ask whoever they are i don't know them by name i don't know them by whatever why are you all, some of you, blaming uh, T. Higgins for this? I, I didn't need somebody to tell me why you blaming him for a seemingly innocent tackle. And like the guy said, they collided at the exact time of a heartbeat, and that's what happened with him, and it stopped his heart for that time. But why are people destroying T. Higgins and making him be like the villain? T. Higgins didn't do anything. It was a, it was a tackle. He tackled the man. I mean, uh, Hamlin tackled him. You know, nobody expected that to happen. But I'm I'm seeing that a lot, and I'm like, wow, that's crazy. You dropping the bomb on him, and he's innocent. That young man, and you know, I pray for him because a lot of this, like you you said earlier, Reb, it's a lot of mental stuff going on. And if you don't think that young man is having a lot of mental issues or had mental issues dealing with that, seeing a guy get into a situation like that and he was indirectly responsible for it, then you don't know what, what, what's going on. Cause back when I played baseball, there was a young, there was a uh, game that I was involved in and there was a fly ball hitting out hit toward the outfield. It was me, our center field and the shortstop converging on the ball. And what happened was I stopped, but our, our center fielder collided with the shortstop and his knee hit him in the back of the neck. And at that moment he was laying on the ground and he told us he couldn't move his legs. And we were like, no, nah, man, don't say that. But in reality, he was paralyzed mm -hmm. on a seemingly in, in a, innocent fly ball. You know, you see him every day in, in a baseball game, but he got paralyzed and he lived for, I think a few years. And then he died and his career was gone. But, you know, the fact that he got paralyzed, nobody blamed our center fielder for it. Nobody said it's your fault. Everybody stood behind him because they were going through it. And that's what I think should be happening with T. Higgins. Stop talking to T. Higgins like he's the, the villain. He did whatever he did. He caused all this to happen. Thank God the young man is going to be okay. And like I say, you pray for both of those, all those people involved. Pray for him, Hamlin, and everybody else. Thanks for your comments, Coach Armani. <clears throat> I mean, um, you know, it was a moment where, like, it seems like all the sports stopped for a second. And I feel like that moment was needed so we can all kind of grasp and um, kind of be there for each other, you know, and I felt like that's what the Bengals did. That's what the Bills did that they, you know, were stop, put the game to the side for a second, focus on life. And, um, you know, I'm happy that he was able to, he's able to get up. Well, I'm, I'm going to say get up, but go to the hospital and, you know, just breathe again. Even if it was through a breathing tube, he was able to, get revived and get the treatment that he needed. So um, again, big goes to the medical staff because that's not an easy job. You know, those guys, you know, do a great, did a great job of, you know, 
trying to get him back. Um, you know, it's it's just tough. You know, it's tough dealing with things like that because it just it was like like Coach said, it was a a, a regular routine tackle. You know, it wasn't nothing that warranted that you would think that, oh man, he, you know, he's messed up or you know, he just he just fell to the ground and you know, and that was that. So, you know, thank God, you know, give ups to the the big man above and you know that he's okay and apparently he's going to be okay. Um, you know, it just gives us a wake up call. You know, it can happen to anybody on the football. You know, it can happen to anybody. So, you know, great job in um, NFL PA. Um, great job, medical staff, you know, and Bengals fans. Great job of handling that situation with a lot of class, you know, consoling other fans. You know, that was that was a great that was a great moment for everybody to, you know, come together and just put the game to the side and, you know, just be there for one another. Cause it's not, it wasn't easy to deal with. So, yeah, those are, those are my thoughts. Um, let me just share my thoughts. Um, you know, I'm Rev, so of course I'm going to put another type spin on it, but we literally witnessed a miracle. And we witness um, in real time on a major platform, the power of prayer. Um, matter of fact, I'm preaching a sermon tomorrow that deals with the scripture in Isaiah chapter 55 around verses eight and nine it talks about God's ways and not our ways. And God's thoughts are not our thoughts. God's ways are higher than our thoughts. And I think we have to realize that God showed that God is still a God who works miracles. And we see that power, that we saw the power of prayer work. One of the things I think everybody should take away from what took place is that it doesn't matter how much money you have, how much influence you have, all of that can matter not in one instance. It didn't matter how much money that was on the field. That money was not going to save Hamlin's life. It didn't matter how much power and position and influence those players, owners had. It was not going to save that young man's life. So I hope that from all that has transpired, somebody realizes the power of God and how much we need God in the midst of all that we go through in life because our money can't save us all the time. Our positions can't save us. Our networks, who we know, none of that stuff can save us. None of that stuff can matter. But only thing is God being in control that can save us. And I just uh, wanted to share this last thing. God works in mysterious ways. So many of you all heard that DeMar Hamlin had a toy drive. His goal was only to raise $2,500. From what happened with many of us see as bad, it turns out to work for his good. But now his toy drive has over $8 million that was raised. And his goal was $2,500. Did y'all just hear what I just said? His goal was $2,500 because of what happened to him. Nobody knew him before what happened to him. And God took what was bad and turned it out for good. And now this man has $9 million to just, or $8 million, and the count is still rising. Right. Rising. Still rising to give rising to, up. to folk who need it the most. So you can't tell me that my God is not good and how God can turn uh, something bad into something good. 
Brett, I saw your Baptist finger up for a minute, so you can close us out on this comment. What you got? Real, man. Like I say, I, it's hard to follow you, man. What you said, I, ups to you because I agree 100%. Uh, and I'll go even further. Just the power of prayer, you're right. I, I think I think it this definitely helped this young man. I, there's something I saw this week that I never thought I would saw. Dan Ovlowski leading a prayer on NFL Live. That, that's something that you never seen in sports. I mean, they literally stopped talking what they were talking about to hold hands and to say a prayer for DeMar Hamlin. And like I said, you you really seen the religious side of a lot of people come out this week with this situation. And I think that's positive, too, that we, we've seen a lot of religious emotion come out from a lot of people and let you know that they're very spiritual, that we as a people, we are very spiritual. And in moments like this, like Rev, like what you said, your, your status doesn't matter. Your, 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 your positions don't matter. Your bank account doesn't matter. Your race doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. Only thing that matters at this moment when, when we see something like this is the power of prayer and the power of the human spirit. And I think those moments won't display to the highest extent this week by our brother, DeMar Hamlin. And it just really touched me in a positive way, the positiveness of prayer, the positiveness from people coming together, wishing nothing but good things for this man to get better and survive. And like you say, his toy drive with only $2,500 gold that is nearly in double digit millions of dollars. God is definitely good. And like Rev said, God works in mysterious ways and power to the Lord up above. All right. That's a good way to end this segment. Thank you, Red, for your closing comments. And, you know, we just thank God for all that is happening with Hamlin, all the stuff that's happening surround the Hamlin situation. Uh, Jerome said the Rev and Deacon have spoken. The church say amen. <laughs> Sister Sylvia said, let us all resolve to give God our time, service, and praise in regular worship. The VP said humanity showed up, he believed in us, and continues to show us in a multitude of ways how he gets down. No matter what or who you believe in, he just reminded us once again, he's here and he's everywhere. That's a good way. That's good stuff right there to, from everybody. We appreciate what you had to say. I think that's a good way to let's just pause right here and we'll go right into halftime and then we'll talk about the national championship game. Good idea. Uh, of halftime. All right. Thank y'all so much for watching the first half of the Red and Rev Sports Show. We got some basketball. We got some college football talk. We got some NFL talk coming your way right after halftime. All right. We'll see you in just a minute. Gentlemen, 
let's jump on in there. Let's get ready to talk some more sports talk. Let's see what somebody had to say. I missed last week's show. Has the documentary Coach Prime on Amazon been discussed? We discussed it a little bit on last okay. week. Just a little bit. Boo. I wasn't on last week's show either, but I have that show saved in my watch list. <laughs> oh, yeah, do it on YouTube. You'll see. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's move on real quickly. We got a championship game to talk about. Amani said he got some fire for us. Uh oh, the religion yeah. may be tested here. So uh, tell us <laughs> what we got to talk about, Amani. You know, before we go to the national championship game, tell us. Oh, what I was going to let y'all just. Oh, okay. Tell us how you really feel about Georgia beating Ohio State. And then yeah. Let, 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 us, let us hear some of them, this dragon breathing fire you got. <laughs> yeah, give us what you, what you really want to talk about when it comes to the national championship game. Go ahead on and give your uh -oh. So go from the semifinals. We won't even talk Michigan TCU. No, I'm not going to talk to you. We don't, we don't want to hear nothing about that. But go ahead on. Talk, talk to us, man. What you got to say? <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, and I'm going to just keep it real, um, the better team didn't win that game. And, I mean, Georgia, I for the first few quarters of that game, I was like, yeah, this is this is it. Like, I, they couldn't stop. They couldn't stop Marvin Harrison Jr. Like I said, would be a problem. But the better the better team didn't win, but the better coach won. Kirby Smart was the better coach, and he outclassed Ryan Day on every level in the fourth quarter. Um, Georgia defense was average at best that game. Might be a little bit below average in the passing game. Jalen Carter, non-existent. So, and then it don't help that, um, and I'm not going to say that, I'm not, I'm not going to say that Ohio State, you know, just, you know, beat up on Georgia, but I just felt like all the fans were like, oh, we were looking. I think what happened is Georgia thought they were good enough to just roll, just go past Ohio State. I mean, that's just my personal opinion. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Georgia won. You know, they came up clutch at the end. And then Shaky Leg couldn't make a field goal. So, I mean, and then I'm going to give, man, C.J. Stroud – Prove that he is one of the best two quarterbacks in college football because he simply went out there and carved George's defense up in a blender. So, I mean, the better team didn't win, the better coach won, though. I I'll say that. And, you know, I think Georgia will just go past – that. they'll go past TCU because I don't think TCU is anywhere near as talented as Ohio State is. So. Nope. Wait a minute. Now, now, let me let me ask you this question. Are you saying Ohio State is the better team just in general or was the better team for that day? They were the better team on the field that day. Okay. All right. I'll give you that because Georgia didn't play its best game. I'll give you that. Okay. All right. All right, Coach, we know you, you were pulling for Ohio State for standing purposes as well as for uh, cheering purposes, because I know you wanted to let Red have it. But uh, <laughs> what, what are your thoughts? Go ahead. Go ahead, Coach. Give it to me. I can still let him have it with that whack 40 to 17 prediction. I can let him have it on that. I knew Ohio State pretty much had the athletes to compete. I'll say that. They had the athletes. They had some good athletes to compete. And – the three things that changed that game, that made that game, or was, I mean, maybe four. Number one, Kirby Smart's timeout before that uh, fake field goal, that's a stroke of genius right there. When you recognize that something like that and you stop it before it gets started, hey, that could have saved you the ball game, even though Ohio State had 12 men on the field, but still. The referee didn't see it, so that could have saved you the ball game right there, which it helped. Uh, number two, uh, Junior, Marvin Harrison Jr. getting uh, obliterated. That took away a weapon. 
Yep. When you take away a weapon, hey, that's one less person you got to worry about. And I don't think anybody else in Ohio State's uh, uh, wild out scared. Uh, they had some players that played. I can't remember the guy's name is Zuki. I can't remember his name. He did well, but the wep- that's a weapon gone because he had over 100 yards and two touchdowns and a half. So take that weapon away. Uh, like I predicted at the beginning, Georgia's wideout showed up and showed out. Georgia's wideouts made a big difference because, remember, uh, the big old uh, Washington got hurt and he was gone, weapon gone. So that's why Ohio State, a reason they was able to hang in a weapon gone. Brock Bowles, they tried to make him pedestrian, but those wideouts for Georgia really said, hey, we're going to step up and we're going to win this game for our team. And the uh, play where the Ohio State uh, cornerback got drunk, I guess he had too much to drink, Gatorade or something, and fell down and left it wide open. Uh, the wider wide open, he scored a touchdown. That was huge too. But the big, uh, a big thing was when the porn star Stetson Bennett got the ball and drove down on uh, Ohio State like they weren't even there. They weren't even there. He just took the ball, pass it 15 yards, pass it 20, pass it 15, just walking down the field. Ohio State defense was on their, on their heels looking lost. I'm like, well, dog, Ohio State, y'all done man- well, you ain't stop him, but you managed to keep him within check, but he just walked down the field like, excuse me, excuse me. And then the most egregious thing of all, which has been said about Ryan Day several times, he is not a big game coach. Nope. The last the last series was absolutely terrible. You get uh, C.J. Stroud to run the ball down to the thirty yard line, field goal range. You are there. You there. You ain't got to. You ain't got to do nothing else. And then you try a, a dumb running play which made absolutely zero sense. And you don't try to run some quick outs, move the ball up the field, get in better field goal position. That was terrible. That was yep. absolutely, then, uh, then you running for your life, had to throw the ball away. I'm like, for real, you lost yardage. And then you line up uh, Chicken George, I mean the uh, Ohio State kicker, to kick a 50-something yarder. I, I I immediately turned away from the game because I knew he was going to miss. And as he showed, that thing looked like it was caught up in a wind tunnel. It looked like they opened the door or the windows or something and wind blew. That thing, it wasn't even close. So, Ryan Day, you, you kind of messed your team up. You snatched victory from the jaws of, I mean, defeat from the jaws of the victory or whatever they call it because that was terrible coaching down the stretch. Terrible play calling. You see, Dave Stroud got you down there, and you go away and try to—I don't know what—try to be cute or something—and uh, and blew that game tremendously. Georgia, uh, I, I think, kind of well, they didn't have a choice. They kind of scored too fast, you know, giving them time. But look what he did with the time; he didn't do anything. So Georgia won forty-two, forty-one, not forty to seventeen. Not 40 to 3 or 80 to nothing or whatever. It was a game. So, hey. So, does, I, Georgia, I, huh? does TCU beat Georgia on Monday? Woo. Now, I, I'm a, I'm a, we're going to go ahead and combine. No. I, I, I'm just, calm down. Calm down. All right, because. Oh, man, you don't have to be so angry when you say it. Coach, Coach, Coach needs TCU ain't got a chance. TCU. Coach, Coach needs to see this for a moment. But, no. This is Red has a one game lead on coach. No, <laughs> TCU, TCU. <laughs> <laughs> one game left, one game lead. Red has a one game lead. Uh, so, now, so can we all can we all admit this? Duggar is a better quarterback. Than CJ Stroud, yes, I don't know. I don't know. No. That. 
No, uh, I say, let me not say better. Let me rephrase my words. No, he's a bit more mobile. Okay, uh, okay, okay. He's a bit yeah, more okay. mobile. Yeah, that's fair. Than that's Stroud. Fair. Yeah, he make fair. he makes certain plays when you know he ain't exactly no track star, but he makes plays with his legs sometimes. Now, can he make those plays with his arm? Oh, he can throw it down the field now. I've but seen him. If you see C.J. Stroud. One of us can throw it down the field, Coach. Arm talent. No, I don't know if he has his arm strength, but he has a cat, uh, uh, Quincy Johnson, that's a wide out 6'4", 215, who is going to be a matchup problem again. There we had Harrison, who was the, who was the best in the land. Now you got Johnson, who's a, a great wide out, who can go get it too. Now, you know, they talked about Keely Wingo being on Harrison. And like, and, and I saw Wingo did not, was not that bad. It's the rest of the team that couldn't stop uh, Harrison. Ringo was somewhere else. It was the rest of the team he was torturing. Because Ringo, kind of, he, he didn't hold him down when he played good defense. But anybody else on Harrison, he lit them up. Thank so, you, Coach. I'm glad you noticed that. <laughs> so you look at TCU. I can't predict they, they got a good running, they got a good running back system. Both of their running backs are pretty decent. Now, will they be able to run? Hey, there's yep. another story yep. for another day. But uh and TCU has a and they say they got a very underrated defense, but don't look like anybody playing defense in these champ in these games. Wasn't no defense in both of those semifinals. And your prediction is, coach. T, if, if TCU is in the game in the fourth quarter, even if they're behind, they got a chance to win. They're a good come behind team. Yeah, let's, 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 who's going to win? Who's so win? The score going to be 35-31 uh, TCU. All right. You're on record because 35-31, he's on record because if by chance Red does not choose TCU to win, we got to go with the score tiebreaker. All right. All right. So – Coaches on the record, TCU 35-31. Now, Red, you've heard the guys talk about the game, Georgia. Yeah. And, uh, Ohio State, you did have a very provocative thought last week. You thought it was going to be a breeze. So, first, let's hear your comments about your thoughts about the Ohio State-Georgia game. And then we'll ask you what your prediction is in the national championship game, which can help determine the Pickles challenge for this particular show. Okay. Uh, I want to give Coach credit because he actually bought some fire. I don't know what our money was bringing, but a little a little heat wave. But I, sta I, I stated nothing but facts, sir. I stated uh -oh. nothing but facts. Yeah. I stated okay. Nothing but facts. Well, facts don't equal fire to me, but appreciate the facts, though. <laughs> but Coach bought some fire. He did. Uh, Real? I will say that that game did humble me some. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, but coach, you got to give me credit. I did correctly predict we would score 40 plus. Now, I didn't think that we would allow 40 plus, but I did get my score right. So at least give me that much credit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah, man, you, uh, you was right. Uh, Ohio State. Definitely was ready. They was ready for us. They uh weren't gonna just let us show up and just walk all over them. Uh, it was a great game. I hate great games when my team's involved because they had me on the edge of my seat, biting my nails all the way to the very end. But when my team does pull those games out, I feel relieved. I feel good. I feel like we accomplished something, and we definitely did because we're still alive and we're playing in the national championship in two days, so we definitely accomplished something. Uh, coaches, crucial plays of the game, he, he was absolutely right. He left out a few. Let me go back and review. These four plays, Rev, had either of these plays went either way, we probably not seeing him with a victory uh, today. First play, of course, the Kirby calling the timeout to nullify the fake punt. And true, they were 12 men on the field. I don't think a lot of people, they were saying it after the fact, but at that point during the game, I don't think people noticed it was 12 men on the field. But thankfully, Kirby got that timeout call because, boy, that was some, one 
very clutch play because had they uh, converted that fourth down punt, probably could have ran, ran the clock out on us. So we definitely needed that play. Another play that was crucial in the game that I thought Coach was going to bring up, uh, the review on, on, on Brock on, on the first down. When he when he uh when it was oh, a fourth yeah. down and he uh and he kept his legs from being on the ground and we went to commercial when they went to commercial I guess they were reviewing it when they got back from commercial they had already reviewed it and gave us the first down so that play right there they kept that drive going we needed that play because uh, we uh, we needed those points from that play so definitely needed that play uh the targeting call on number twenty two on Marvin Harrison Jr. yeah that getting reversed. That <laughs> kept us in the game right there because had that play gone the other way, that probably would have been more points for Ohio State at, at that point. And four points, a touchdown is different than a field goal. So, and also a play in the first half, the coach, you probably forgot about the illegal motion in the second quarter on Ohio State when they were going for it on fourth and one, yeah. and they got that illegal motion call. That saved us some points right there because we got the ball back with down to score the touchdown. So those four plays right there were very crucial into UGA becoming victorious that night. Uh, like I say, I, I'm happy my Bulldogs won, but like Kirby said after the game, we still got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. We think we're going to beat TCU. I know we're going we gonna to beat them, but we have got that get stuff together. Our passing defense didn't have his best game. Uh, our defense as a, as a whole didn't have his best game. Uh, Stetson definitely was not he, – he was everything me and Rev thought he was early in the game, but he did pull some plays off late in the game in the fourth quarter. You want to say clutch plays. But like I say, Stetson didn't have his best game and it almost cost us so – Overall, my Bulldogs won, but it was not a typical Bulldog fashion. So I'm happy we survived. I'm happy we playing that national championship game, but we got to play a much better game if we think we're going to beat TCU. We got to bring Bulldog-type uh, performances to this national championship game because Ohio State was just like this from from, from uh, getting us. But one great thing I will say was so nice to see us clinch this victory at the stroke of midnight. Oh, what a happy new year it was for me and my Bulldogs. So, <laughs> sorry for shaky leg, but hey, that's how it goes. You get paid to make kicks. You didn't make the kick. My Bulldogs won, and that's how it go. I'm not looking back. I'm looking forward. Bulldogs won. We survived. I'll see you on Monday, TCU. Real? Well, now you got to give us your prediction on Monday night. Oh, okay, okay, baby. Uh, my prediction. Uh, well, I get a prediction here. Well, the way we were going to play against Ohio State, now we definitely going to bring the Bulldog type to TCU. Bulldogs 45, TCU 17. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Again? <laughs> what? what are these games we going to play like we supposed to play, Coach? I, Ohio State, okay, they were ready for But we, we, we better be ready for TCU, man. We better not come in there playing. Because like you say, man, oh, TCU ain't the type of team you want to mess around with. So we're going to be missing, ready. We ain't we ain't fools. We're going to be ready for them. Huh? You missing somebody. Who? The dog, Ugga, will not make the trip. Ugga will oh, not be yeah. there. Yeah, I know. Y'all in trouble. Oh man. So so Red gonna make sure that blowout is coming in one of these games. Yeah. I'm coming one of these games. You're gonna have me on the edge of my seat both times now. Armani, what's your prediction with the score? I don't think you gave it. Mm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 34 28, Georgia. All right, so he gives them a six point lead. Um I think the game went. Ohio State's way because of what I shared last week on how it would be close. I think the Bulldogs did not put their foot on the throat of Ohio State after they stopped them on the first drive, had a chance to score a touchdown if Stetson Bennett just hands the ball off to McIntosh instead of trying to run it because McIntosh had a clear path to the end zone where they had to settle for a field goal, and then the field goal kicker missed that field goal, and that right. gave life 
to Ohio State. Had Georgia scored a touchdown after the defense had just stopped Ohio State, that would have put a lot of doubt in Ohio State's mind, and that game could have gone the way that Red talked about in his score. But Georgia gave them light by letting them score first, not capitalizing on when they had a chance to score first, and that gave Ohio State new life. And that's when C.J. Strauss and the players started believing we could play with them. And one thing you cannot do is give people who already to somewhat are, are in somewhat in some kind of way are defeated mentally. You can't let them have that hope. And that's what Georgia did. And that's why Georgia was scra- scratching all through the game because they gave Ohio State hope. And they capitalized and CJ Stroud was like, bump this. I'm about to do my thing. And he did his thing. And Marvin Harris did his thing, and then Georgia was in trouble. But you could tell where I'm going to disagree with Imani. The better team was Georgia. And the reason why they were the better team is because on two separate occasions, Georgia came back from double-digit leads. That shows you that they were the better team. If Ohio State was the better team, they stomped on Georgia – by blowing them out when you already got them up by 11. Georgia could score, in some cases, at will. The biggest problem of, uh, that Georgia had to experience for three quarters is that Stetson Bennett was believing all that hype that people gave him. He really believes he's a Heisman Trophy candidate. <laughs> that was more of a career achievement award rather than him being truly a Heisman Trophy candidate. He was up there smelling himself. And that's why I posted early on in the first quarter, the worst thing that happened to Stetson Bennett was that he was considered a Heisman Trophy candidate. His numbers did not warrant being in New York. His age did not warrant (laughs) being in New York. You know, so Stetson Bennett, believing his the press that these folk were giving him that was not well-deserved, cost the Bulldogs, and even Kirby Smart stated it at halftime that the quarterback was basically killing them. So he knew that Stetson Bennett was not playing within himself. As bad as the Bulldogs played, the Bulldogs still came out victorious, which showed that they were the better team. Ohio State played the best game that they could play. Yeah. What else could they have done better besides not committing those penalties? But game wise, they played a pretty clean game. They played great offense. Their defense did the best that they could do against Georgia's offense, and they still came up short. So, Georgia, if they play like they played, Last Monday, they got a chance to lose the game. You can't you can't play like that consistently. Nope. Georgia's defense has to show up. If Georgia's defense shows up, it's not a game. No. Nope. Right? I think Dugan's gonna get some runs, but here's the thing: as Marvin Harrison learned, those Bulldogs can stick. <laughs> Unfortunately, got hurt. If Brother Dugans keeps on running, he ain't gonna be able to run like that for four quarters. All right. So if he, I hope hope number twenty-two, okay. (laughs) If TCU thinks that's the game plan, TCU's backup better be ready to play some ball. (laughs) Oh, oh Lord, Rev. I don't want the backup in there. We know we don't either. Because George doesn't do well with backups. No, no, especially somebody we ain't never seen before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Georgia, but but I, I go Georgia 40, TCU 26. Uh, Rev, now you know the absence of big O, Daniel Washington, may make a difference. Nah. You don't think so? Nah. You, you saw how many points they scored without him against Ohio State? <laughs> Wait a minute. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, did, you talking about the tight end? Yeah. yeah. Did, did, did no, he's playing. Did you see how many points George scored without him? Jerome, Jerome, um, 
I, I'll agree with you on that. Oh, Marvin Harrison don't get hurt. Ohio State winning that game. I'll that's, agree with you on that. That's about it. That's speculation. Y'all couldn't stop him. Couldn't stop him. But that's speculation. But but he it is what it is. It's speculation. We got to go with what happened. Yeah, exactly. So all this is he, no, he did if he didn't get hurt, the pack I mean, is can Jordan advance. If 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 Washington didn't get hurt, right, he lose the game. Uh, I mean, he won. He wasn't as big of a factor as Marvin Harrison was. That's not. That's because not, he wasn't there. He was hurt. He's, no, a, he's a, a factor as a blocker. He's right. a, he's a factor in a mismatch. If you got to constantly put somebody a DB on a six seven tight end the whole game, guess what? That opens up the game for somebody else. That opens up the game for Brock Bowers. And Brock Bowers can't get dumped. So, you know, you can go on this if, 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 if. Injuries are part of the game. And Ohio State's supposed to have been recruited on the same level as Georgia, so it's supposed to be plug and play, baby. I mean, let's think about it. Georgia lost Noel, Noel, Noel Smith. Yeah, Noel Smith. The, my best defense. The first round draft pick. They lost a the guy who replaced him, Shambliss, the white kid, right. in the game. And he made a great play early on the game. So, you know, it could go both ways, man. It, it, even, it evens out our money. Come on. You got to admit that. No, no, hell, was, watch I, this. The only reason I say it, it don't even out is because when you lose somebody like that early, it's easier to adjust. You can adjust early. And then it's like the chemistry with the players, you know, when you lose a guy – in the four, in in the game, it, it knocks off the the chemistry when you have to plug in somebody else. But I mean, he. But he, now, he, let, now let's let's be honest. Now, the key at Marvin Harrison was injured for about a month, so Ohio State was playing football without him for about a month this season. I'm saying he was he was hurt for for a few games this season. I so mean, they, and, who, and who was playing? Who who was playing that uh, said he wasn't going to play? And then he declared for the draft and said he wasn't going to play in the champion. I mean, oh, you talking about the, the other dude? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, that's crazy. Now, what kind of guy is he going? You going to miss the the playoff game because you get ready for the draft, dude? You, but it is what I, it is. It is what it is. Oh, uh, 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 we been playing in the playoffs, buddy. You got to show you know what up. What it is, Armani? It is what it is. George, There's George a won. new football sheriff in town, and it's not Alabama. That's what. Who, who, oh, oh, here we go. Uh oh, here right. we go. You gotta, yeah. you gotta have the kind of dominance. I, I, I forgot, man. You Let's gotta go. have the kind of. Uh, before you say that, have the dominance we had, and then talk. You oh, gotta go man, five. Man, you gotta have man, five man, championships man, in ten years. You gotta have five championships in ten years. On Monday, that's back to back. Okay. So what you saying? That's not dominant. That's, 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 that's not dominant. That's not dominant. Not Alabama. That's not right? dominant. Not Alabama dominant. Oh, Alabama! Alabama ain't never had no. Alabama only went back to back once. Okay, y'all. Okay, and once. what do you mean? <laughs> y'all ain't even went back to back yet. Go back to back, then talk. What was the key word you just said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Moving on. <laughs> we gotta have. But no, I'm talking. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna let you get away with this, Rev. You gotta have the type of dominance Alabama had in a decade of football to be considered on that type of level. Now, y'all. If y'all go back to back, everybody back has said Georgia has replaced Alabama in this. Really? Season. You the only one everybody. still living in the past. No. Everybody. No. Georgia has they replaced have our Alabama. money. No. They've been on out. They've been slurping us this. Y'all gotta keep y'all gotta if, if y'all go, if y'all win three, four, okay. I I'll give it to you. Hey, we ain't got, we got to win one right, day. Right. No. If you win back to back, bro, that's something that nobody has done since Alabama, and that's been over a decade. And, but and, and real, so the I college mean, playoff ain't nobody went back to back ain't since the college playoff. Back to back in the it. college playoff, y'all did it in the BCS era. Thank you. Oh, so now we wow, wow. what a way to move the goalposts. Okay, that's right. the truth. Okay, is it, is it harder to make the college playoff or money? Championship is champ. Okay, all right. Okay. We're right. Championship is championship, and we're about to go two back to back. So you're right. Win five in ten years, then come talk. Win five in ten I'm years. I'm talking away. after Monday night. I'm talking after Monday night. Right. For real, you five might well do. You might well get ready for UGA fans talking because 
y'all turds, y'all dominance is over with. Okay, I told y'all that. Right. Oh, so we not again. Let's keep this show. If we if y'all saying we're not gonna win another one, okay. All right. Not with us standing in the way you want. No. <laughs> so we're not winning another one. No, so, so to keep it funny, we're not winning another one. Last thing I'm gonna say this. I'm not yeah. winning, we're not winning another win one. Win the SEC West. Let's talk yeah. about that. Win the SEC yeah. West. Because you're not the defending SEC West champion. How about that? Red, How about that? Sound, win the SEC West. And win the SEC West, West, West again. You sound crazy, Rev. Y'all got to worry about LSU. You got to talk about a man who just got to town when the you SEC know, West. Don't you know, let that man come from Notre Dame to LSU and win the SEC West. Okay. That's embarrassing. Win the SEC house. West. A man in his first Why is it embarrassing? We got – okay. You didn't I mean, even – like y'all see what y'all had. You didn't even – Check this out, Rev. Check this out, Rev. He didn't even know. have his players, and he that beat all of them. Alabama came back with the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, and they still couldn't win the SEC West. He, he got beat. He got they beat back. back. They came back with the number Every one moment. defensive player in the nation, and still couldn't win the SEC West. He got Every beat moment. by Coach Cough Drops reaching. Have your moment. Have your moment. That man ain't even recruited his players yet and still won you know, the SEC. Coach Cough Drop beat y'all too. What are you talking about, Rev? They smoked y'all. What are you talking about? They had the better team. Let's not go. Yep. There. They had the better team. They had Joe Burrow. They had the better team. Okay. Right. So what are we talking you, about? Now, what have they done since Coach Cough Drop got fired? They won a national championship and they're about to win another one. What has that? What has Alabama done? They Amazing. can't win the SEC West. Win the yeah. SEC West and holler back at me. Have, we not, have we not won a championship since he left? Okay. All right. USC yeah. is coming. Coach, Coach Cough Drop lost in 20. I mean, he won the championship in 2019. We won it? in 2020. Okay. What'd y'all win this year? What'd y'all win this year? Nothing. What do you mean? What have y'all won with Bryce Young? Nothing. All right. So, oh, before, Lord. That's, that's, that's what you've done for us lately. No, but, no because how can, you say, how can you say y'all taking, y'all taking over as the more dominant team than we? Y'all have not even had the decade of dominance that we have had. If you want to be real, y'all having the dominance, the same dominance that Clemson is having, that, that Clemson had. Yeah, Clemson. Clemson. Yes. Okay. Now the back to now it ain't been a back to back champion in a while now. Who, who, who no, no, I understand that part. I I, I understand. No, I'm that just part. saying. I, I All right. So part. you you won nothing with your current quarterback. You won nothing with your current defensive player of the year. So you didn't even win the SEC West. Okay, Rev. So, so silence is in order. Thank you. USC is coming back. Now you I'm ready. I'm ready. You just got to take the loss this USC, year. I don't even know why you're trying to hate. No, because y'all, I mean, how can you say that? And y'all even, y'all have not, okay. USC, we we, we didn't At this point, y'all just hate. At this point, it's Coach, y'all just Come on now. Huh? Y'all got to be. Point, y'all, just gotta, y'all, got, y'all can't be losing too late now. Come on, Coach. That's okay. Hey, we came in SEC territory and just stole one of their best, best players. That's Coach. what we are doing is still. USC. But y'all, but USC needs still some defensive players. That's okay. Yeah, we'll take you're care lying, of that too. Coach. Y'all, y'all, got to get, y'all got to get that defense. Y'all, we, we, y'all, we y'all better tell y'all better tell Lincoln Riley he need to get some defense because that's learned. what that's what he suffered in Oklahoma. His defense was terrible in Oklahoma. His defense is terrible in USC. He needs to get a new defense coordinator. <laughs> Rev, 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 are we sure Colorado can't beat them with that defense? Oh, maybe. <laughs> oh no. Maybe. One year in USC, he took them. From uh, the transfer portal took y'all. The transfer, uh, the so transfer they, portal took y'all from that's nothing. Okay. To nothing. You you don't tell me everybody ain't use the transfer portal. Not like USC did last year. That's okay. <laughs> that's what you got to do. If they come now and then we get them, but then we got to build chemistry, coach. That's but coach, you okay. but coach, you do admit y'all y'all got to get the defense fixed, right? Oh, we gonna get the defense. We that's what we doing right now. We I hate DJ, but the money sounds a bit bitter. <laughs> <laughs> Jealous, I know. Man, jealous I'm like, of, I don't even know. Of. How can I be jealous if we – okay. Y'all haven't done anything okay. lately. Y'all didn't even win the SEC West. Okay, Rev. That's, okay. It's true. I mean, okay, it's Rev. facts. Man, how are okay. you going to be talking about championships if y'all ain't won the SEC West this year? You up here telling me what y'all did in the past. Okay, Rev. You sound – What have you sound, done in the present? Okay. What okay. have you done in the present? Okay, Rev. Moving on. 
All right, moving on. The, the season is still going on, on, and Bryce Young has the chance. Okay. I, I thought right. I thought you I thought you were big on, on facts, all money. You can't even accept the facts for y'all. What do you mean, hey, Brent? William no. Anderson declared for the draft, and the moving season on. is still going on. I know. Moving, <laughs> moving on. I wonder why. Moving on. Why are they declaring for the draft when the moving season on. is still going on? Moving on. I, I thought you were gonna bring the fire today, our money. See, like you get watered down. <laughs> I mean, I, I, said, I said nothing. There was one, game, said nothing there was one game. game left in the season, and Alabama players are declaring for the draft. Why is that? Because they had nothing to play for. <laughs> they training while Georgia preparing for championships. They were playing at 12 o'clock noon last year mm-hmm. with Paw Patrol was last on. Week. And I, I had to decide that yeah, I want to watch the Mickey Mouse Club. We're going to be all right. Well, y'all need a new defensive coordinator. Well, the Grinch, the, 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 the Grinch, he, from Oklahoma. he don't do well around Christmas time. The Grinch don't. They always beat him. So, you know, you got to get rid of the Grinch. But, but check this out, Amani. Don't let another first-year coach come up in the SEC West and beat y'all. Because there's a guy – who got a got a history beating y'all? Moving and he got some talent in Mississippi. Uh oh. Hugh Freeze, don't sleep on him. So Uh-oh. that's Uh-oh. Why are you talking about okay. Georgia? Okay, Rev. Make sure y'all can win the SEC West. Okay, Rev. Okay. Because LSU already got you. Okay. Auburn got a guy who's already beaten you when you play when he coached at Mississippi. And mm-hmm. won a championship that year. Like, and then okay. Jumbo Fisher, if he get it right, Jimbo. <laughs> Jumbo. <laughs> well, you see, hey, you see who Jimbo teaming up with. Hey, Jimbo. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, God. Did you, did you... <laughs> Bobby no. Petrino. <laughs> yeah, right. Did you miss that, Real? Well, did, yeah. did he hire Bobby Petrino to be his OC? Yeah. Now, that, now I, I ain't going to talk about Petrino. He no offense now. Yeah, offense. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Offense. They got something to work. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was a good offense. move. So, but you're going to you have to lock him in his office where yeah, he can't get out. I'm not. I'm not. I ain't for the Sands on Petrino. I'm not sold on Alabama football when they couldn't win a national championship with Bryce. Coach, you're going to have to lock him away from the Chili. You said yeah, say you that one more time. Real real time. Real. I'm not sold on Alabama football when they could not win a championship with Bryce Young. Oh, what are you okay. Talking yeah. about Rev, you sound. Oh my God. You sound what? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. So, so you Bryce also Young you don't think y'all should have won a championship with Bryce Young? No. Yeah. Definitely, we should have won one with him. So why you keep on what Rev saying it? You, you, you got more faith in this backup who y'all trying out there than Bryce Young? No, what it is, Rev, he just can't handle that we clowning him right now. That's that what it is. When y'all, get truth, six, when y'all get six and ten, call me. Get six and ten, call me. Okay, so so we can't, we can't celebrate. We get can't celebrate none of our championships. Back, back, back is nothing. Get his half back as many. Back to back is nothing. That's cute. Back We've back been there, done that. That's cute. That's, That's cute. cute. Been there, done but, that. But, but it would be cute if y'all could at least win the SEC West. Been there, done that. That it'd be cute if y'all win the SEC West next year. It'd be cute. Okay. Okay. It'd be Moving cute to find y'all in the SEC championship game. It'd be cute. <laughs> I, okay. I money, I money, you Moving get exposed on. right now as a sore. Not loser, it, how, you, you got. I mean, how am I getting exposed if I'm just I'm telling the facts? I'm talking about I'm not sold on Alabama football when we won. We've dominated the decade of college football. How can you? Talking you talking about the fact? You talking you, about the pat? That dominance ain't gonna stop y'all from beating Miles next year. Wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Wait a minute. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, not less miles, the other guy um, from Notre Dame. None of that's Miles Kelly. None of that's Miles Kelly. None of them championships in the, the five championships got y'all to win the SEC. I want, I want you to keep that same energy when y'all go, when y'all, because what goes up must come down. Don't bring up them past championships when y'all come down. Don't bring them up. I don't want to hear it. They got a champ. Okay. They're the defending champions now. They about to be the champion this year. Okay, but I'm saying when y'all do come down, we gotta, we, goes we, up, you see well, we got goes up. Well, money. You got to wait for those moments to happen. It'll happen. Oh, It'll but happen. it will. So, so you don't even want to talk about what's going on presently. But now you're supposed to be Madam Cleo. Now you predicted the future. Now, no, okay. I just want y'all to keep the same energy. That's all I'm saying. When have, we not, when, when have we not kept the I don't want to hear y'all talking goes. about these past championships. Oh, Georgia won, bat, bat, we won. Okay, I'm just saying. Okay. It would be within the last two to three years, wouldn't it? 
No. We've won a championship in no the last goal. three years. So what are you talking about? But y'all this year didn't make the SEC West. Y'all didn't win the SEC West. Didn't okay. even make the playoffs. Didn't even make the playoffs. Playing playing on 12 o'clock and you call. Come on, man. Next, next, let's go on. We we got to skip some of the five for five. We went over too much. Uh let's go to basketball real quickly. And and we'll just deal with uh a couple of topics right here. Uh because Armani was in his feelings right there. So I'm not in my feelings. Y'all just talking craziness. Okay. Joint typical jo- new new blood, new blood talk. Typical new blood talk. All, all you should be doing right typical now is just talk. congratulating right. us. Typical new blood talk. Clemson said the same thing. Ain't relevant no more. Clemson not re- Clemson not relevant, but Kirby Smart ain't going nowhere. Well, yeah, you're welcome, by the way, for that. Moving on. Oh, you welcome. Man you're welcome. You're welcome. welcome. Where did the man go to school? What was he before? What Where did he, the man go to college? What was he before? Where did the man go to college? What was he before? Where did the man go to college? Where did the man go to college? University of Georgia. But what was he? Thank you. No, you can't do that. You cannot do that. What was he before Nick Saban got there? What are you talking about? He was what has he been since he's been in Georgia? How, was, how, was, how long was he when he said before? And, 13 uh, years, 14 and, and years. How many, cha- how many championships he helped your defense win? Five. Okay. Five. Now, you so, Ram, so you can up. we add those five to Kirby's resume? It's up. interesting they've only won one since he left. <laughs> <laughs> We've won two. We beat y'all for one, and we won one against Ohio State. And moving on. Almighty, right. Nick it's Saban. Right. Now, was it's Nick right. Saban coaching under somebody before he got hired? Of course he did. Of course. Exactly. Okay, he so why are you two for when Kirby was hired Nick under Nick Saban? Saban? Nick Saban wouldn't be Nick Saban without Bill, Bel- without, um, Bill Belichick. Oh. Okay, <laughs> so everybody had to start under somebody. The fact is, what has he done since he's been at Georgia? A I'm lot of good things. Be, uh, I'm and I'm not denying that, but guess what? You aren't? What, what was Kirby Smart before he got with Nick Saban? A running backs coach? He wasn't even coaching his side of the football. Dude, that's hating. You're hating on Kirby Smart right now. What does that matter, buddy? Yeah, why are you bringing that up? I don't understand why you're bringing that up. I mean, so Bill Bill Belichick is less of a coach because he was, you know, somebody's coach, running back coach, and then he made the defense coordinator. No, No, he he, he less of a coach because Tom Brady gone. (laughs) <laughs> well, now he's doing a decent job this year, though. He's doing yeah, he's about to get a nominated. He's doing all right this year. But I'm not this year. Okay, bro. It's a new sheriff in town. Come on, just give us it's our not, props. You don't have to. Not, you can give us our props. Not. You don't have to. Hey, you were giving us our props until the game. I told you, Rev, you were just blowing smoke. I knew he would. And now he can't even give us our props after the game. All right, man. I gave me y'all props. I just said, um, "Oh, you better, you really better." No, they, they really. The clock, In other man. news, we gas is going forward. up two dollars. Uh, <laughs> Armani, I love you, brother. I'm gonna make sure I call you first. Oh. You <laughs> <laughs> I'm, you how you gonna call me? And I'm picking y'all to win the championship. I'm gonna call you first. I'm gonna call y'all you gonna first. win the championship. Nobody's right. denying that. All right, Dude, so we're not we're not falling for this sarcastic uh, credit. All right, let's we, move on. we all know if, if TCU upset us, you'll be on here telling us what this and that. So save it. Hot Real, take, he, hot he's take. pulling for us to lose man, it in hey, reality. Hot takes, man. It ain't hot gonna happen. Takes. It ain't hot gonna takes. happen. Lakers, should they make a move there on this winning streak? Red, give us one minute of your time. Go. Okay. Personally, I don't think so. I think we should just stay pat, save those two picks. We got salary cap. Money coming next year. Uh, I think if we can just convince LeBron to wait one more year for us, and who knows, we 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 we, we come, we rising up now. So with the way the West playing, the West is so mediocre this season. I don't even know where we gonna end up. Who knows where we'll be by uh, the trading deadline or by at least the All Star break. So my thing is for the Lakers to keep playing, keep getting these young guys playing better because the more games we win, the more that winning feeling, that feeling they'll get and then it'll, it'll start to become consistent. I like I like how we playing right now. Uh, I think LeBron uh, playing more games and these young guys keep playing better. Thomas Bryant has been a steal. Uh, say, oh, my bad. Let me wrap it up. Oh, okay. Uh, just, uh, no. 
No, don't make a move. Stay pat. Keep them two draft picks and go into the offseason with salary cap space and those two draft picks for trade potential in the offseason. Stay, stay oh, pat for right now. Huh? Lakers make a move, coach. No. I mean, what, what are you making a move for? You know your weakness. I mean, your, your, your history. AD is coming back whenever, unless he uh, pulls a shoestring out of place or something and had to go out for another month. So, Tell I mean, no <laughs> Thomas Bryant has, has stepped in and said, hey, I'm going to show y'all what I can do. Uh, Reeves is playing well. Uh, don't make any moves. Keep going. You won four in a row. You're climbing up toward that, uh, of all the things, the number 10 spot. So, hey, keep doing what you're doing. Armani, should the Lakers make a move? No, stay where you at. And just like Rev said, stay where you at. Don't make no sudden moves that can hurt you down the road. Save the picks, save the cap space, go into the offseason next year to where LeBron is probably still going to be there. I don't think he's going nowhere. So just keep, stay where you at. Don't make no major moves just for the right now. I'm going to disagree with all y'all. The Lakers should make the move. Colin Cowherd or the herd influenced me. Oh, God. Then they need to trade Russell Westbrook. <laughs> Reason being, I think Russ is doing great in the regular season. Can you trust that same production in the playoffs? When teams lock in on play, when teams key in on various weaknesses. I think, again, what Russ is doing is game by game. People are not game planning the way they game plan in the playoffs. Shooting is necessary. If the Lakers make the playoffs, they need some shooting. So therefore, I think they should make a trade for Russ, somebody to take his contract and bring in a shooter. But they do, they we need two shooters. Well, we'll see. We'll have, see. You, have you noticed, Rev, that when LeBron go down the court with the ball, like I saw Trey Young do last night, everybody pretty much get out of the way. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's willing to take that block. All right, last last topic for five or five. NFL coaches on the hot seat. Coaches on the hot seat. Go. Woohoo! Ron Rivera, have a nice day. You 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 tanking Ron Rivera. Putting Carson Wins in there when y'all had a shot at a playoff. You tanking, dude. Come on, you one of them. Uh Josh McDaniels, maybe. Yeah, they might throw him in there. And a surprise, but I don't think it's going to happen, is, is uh, the guy for the uh, Miami Dolphins. If they lose tomorrow, Miami he Dad. might be in trouble. That would be six losses in a row after starting the season on such a high note. Armani, who's on the hot seat? Okay. Uh, Miami Daniel. Mr. Playoff, yeah, you're going to be on the hot seat, brother. Um of course, you know, Carolina's going to be looking for a new head coach. No. no. I'm telling you. Um, I'm not going to say Lovey Smith because he don't have his – he don't have his – oh, Chicago Bears, if y'all – hey, I know he just got there, but you get, he got about one more year to prove that he might be able to do something. His seat will get warm. Um, I hate to say it, but Arthur Smith, this is two straight <laughs> losing seasons, man. I'm telling you. I'm going to say this, Terry, don't let this man get you fired, like I've been saying. And I'm telling you, if one of them top quarterbacks fall in your lap in that draft and you don't take them and you That's lose again next year, your seat going to be hot, scorching hot. All right. Bath is not taking a quarterback, all right? I keep telling you. <laughs> What's up, man? Who's on the hot seat? Uh, well, I, I wasn't even prepared for this topic. Okay, let's see. Coach is on the hot seat. Uh, coach, you might have to prepare yourself because the Panthers coach might be let go. Uh, they had a chance to win the division. Had he won the division, then you could have said, all right, that would have been a travesty to let that man go after he just won the division and got him to the playoffs. He didn't win the division. Uh, that, 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 the guy who owned the team, he, he wants a splash. He's probably going to go in a, di a different direction. So, good job, Steve Wilkes, but I don't think he's going to keep the job. Uh, I don't think the Dolphins coach is in trouble. I don't think the Bears coach is in trouble. I don't think the Falcons coach is going anywhere. 
Uh, I tell you, you want to get you want to hear a surprise? I will give you a surprise. How about Todd Bowles for the books? If they if they get if you one and done in the playoffs, I can see the books going in a different direction from him because Brady may not come back. And Bowles, man, it seems like you proven. You might be a better defensive coordinator than head coach. Uh, McDaniel's. It would be bold for, for Mark Davis to get rid of him after one year. It seemed like the team trying to have a little fire with Stidham, and, and Adams even said he's coming back next year. That's a surprise. I meant to post on that. But, uh, uh, Rev, it might not be that many coaching changes this particular. Obviously, it might be a few, but not as many as we anticipate. Like I say, the Chargers coach got them to the playoffs. He'll be back. Uh, Broncos already fired their coach, so we know they'll be looking for a change. So right now, I see the Broncos. I see Carolina. Uh, I think the Falcons uh, bringing Smith back for one more year. I think the Dolphins are going to bring. All right, come on, man. That's it. All right. Uh, <laughs> I think there's only one coach that's really on the high speed that's really going wrong. Uh, because it gave yeah. the season away for that Carson Wentz. I think Carolina, even though their owner may be looking for a splash, Steve Wilkes did more than enough to make that team be his team because they became they became relevant. Wow. And even on the road, they almost beat uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He hey, made, I would love for him to go. Get fired. Arnold, relevant. Sam Donald was thrown away in the ocean of forgetfulness for quarterbacks. <laughs> and Sam Darnold looked decent under Steve Wilkes' coaching ability. For the Panthers, they want to get the splash. They already tried the splash with the college coach. Stick to the guy who already gave y'all something to show forth where they got heart. They play hard. And you got to let the black man get the job. Hey, I, I hope I hope the Carolina Panthers owner is thinking like you guys are thinking because I'm with you. I think Steve Wilson did a tremendous job. I just don't think that owner khaki pants. Is, is thinking like us. Well, they are, and, and they've already said that khaki pants and the Panthers may be talking, so they have already. Yeah, uh, khaki pants gonna be looking for a way out after this legal trouble coming his way. He might pull a Pete Carroll. All right, gentlemen, uh, we're gonna skip the Falcons and Steelers report. We were right. over time. Uh, we know the Falcons ain't playing for nothing. The Steelers need red and black, and black and gold to get into the playoffs. They gotta, they gotta hope the Miami Dolphins lose as well as the New England, New England Patriots lose in order to get in the playoffs with the win. So we'll oh, see. I'm pulling for them. I'm All pulling right, for them. Let's see where we are with these uh, NFL. Oh God! Can I I don't know. It's Do I need to close my eyes? For real? You like you left all season. <laughs> All right. Here we go. This is where we are, gentlemen. Uh Red went four and four last week. He's now uh six games behind Rev. Coach had the best record out of all of us by one game, went seven to one. That's right. He's three games behind the Rev. And Amani is just counting up the longhorn money as we speak. So that's where we're at. <laughs> all right. All right. Let's go right into it, gentlemen. Um, yeah, where were you in December, our money? <laughs> all right, gentlemen. We're going to get ready to pick some some good games on today. Let's uh, get some pick em music. D- doesn't even matter if I pick. Uh, <laughs> we, we can skip it because it ain't going to matter much. But if you want, you know, you're on the show, so you might as well pick them and continue to go into that bad record. I mind you. Mm-hmm. You you getting you you getting ready for next year, Amani. Don't worry about it. You showing it. You can have it yeah. on, 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 on air, so we'll give you a pass. All right, just, all the first game. Just like your turds. Get ready for next year. Titans <laughs> versus the Jaguars. I'm gonna pass it off to Coach. I'm gonna go last. Coach, who you got? Um Jaguars, but it's not gonna be as easy as they thought, and then Josh Dobbs, I love my boy, but he's not ready yet after a couple games, so it's going to be the Jaguar. All right, Ray, who you got? I'm with Coach. It's going to be the Jag. Uh, Dougie P, finally. I knew Dougie P would have a positive impact over Trevor. It took a while, but he's finally uh, proven that he might have been a good, decent number one pick. The Jags are feeling it. They feeling it. Is this is their time now? They're going to go ahead and win this division. They're at home. They're going to go on and celebrate. Jags. 
Come on, who you got? Jags. All right, I'm going to make you unanimous Jags. I don't trust the quarterback situation in Tennessee. On to the next thing. Red is on you. Rams versus Seahawks. Now, I would love for the Rams to pull an upset. I would love for Baker to go into the 12th man and beat Seattle just so that Packers and Lions game will mean a little more. But the way Geno Smith is playing this season, the way Seattle's playing, they playing for something. They know if they if they beat the Rams and Detroit just happened to, to upset the Packers, that they they in the playoffs. So Seattle gonna play and they're gonna play to win and they gonna win. Come on. Uh Rams versus Seahawks. Rams versus Seahawks. Which which one of these teams is my Falcons' best chance to move up? Um, let me see. None. Our money. Don't worry about the Falcons. <laughs> God. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go to Seahawks. Though. Seahawks got that. They got that one. Seahawks, twelve home. man all day, any day. That's who I got. Who you got, Coach? Seahawks. Rams. Right. Uh, a, 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 a refire. On to the next one. The money's on you, Jets versus Dolphins. Oh, I'm gonna go with the Dolphins. You. Any <laughs> reason why? Yeah, think about it. They at home. I'm gonna go with the Jets. The Jets, uh, the Dolphins are uh, going to their third string quarterback. Don't trust that. The Jets, backup to me, is better than the Dolphins' third string. And I think the Dolphins are going to go ahead on and allow that train wreck to look real good with all the success of uh, the, the continued losses that they've been done. So they're going to go on a losing streak, and uh, that's why the Jets win. Coach, you got J E T S Jets Jets Jets. I'm not, I'm, I'm sorry, Red. Oh, okay. I thought Coach was gonna add some more to it. Uh, I'm with y'all. This is gonna be the Jets. Uh, Dolphins. The <laughs> tour is important to this offense. The tour is not that. This offense is not the same, and that means the team is not the same because they're pretty much based on the offense and tour. The defense respectable, but they need their quarterback, and they don't have them. Teddy ain't gonna do it. The guy behind Teddy ain't going to do it. The Jets and the Dolphins are going to both finish at 8 and 9. And uh, it's sad because the Dolphins had a championship, had a chance this year. It's sad for the Jets because they messed up their quarterback situation. But both teams are going to finish a very disappointing 8 and 9. And it's going to open the door for Coach's team. Let's go Steelers. Uh, on to the next game. It's on me, Chiefs versus Raiders. Give me the Chiefs. They got every incentive. To win this game, they win this game, they get home field advantage by default unless they play the Bills or the Bengals in the championship, then they got to play off-site now. But give me the Chiefs. Who you got, Coach? Uh, the Chiefs going to win, but I know Jared Stidham is playing for a starting job next year with the Raiders because Derek Carr won't be there, so he's going to try to impress the big boy, the boss and see if he can throw for 400 some yards or whatever like he did last week. So, Chiefs. Brett, who you got? I got the Chiefs. I can't believe Jacobs got 1,600 yards. Adams got almost 1,500 yards. But the Raiders got some skilled players. They got to get a quarterback. And it's a man. Uh, but I don't care. Chiefs going to win. The Raiders season is over with. I wish they had to play a little better because this game could have been a little more. And I probably would have been tempted to take an upset. But Chiefs going to go ahead and lock it up. They playing for something much bigger. Come on in. Chiefs. On to the next one. Coach, tell us why the Steelers beat the Browns. Because they're determined to do what they have to do to get in the playoffs. But one thing that concerns me, now all of a sudden all the people around are saying Steelers going to make the playoffs. And that, that, that's bad luck. They wouldn't talk about us for a minute, talking about Steelers just playing for this and that. Now all of a sudden everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. So, you know, Steelers win, but I just don't like the, 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 the new – bandwagon people jumping on there in, in the NFL. Uh, Red. Coach, you, you upset that people are cheering for your team now? Bad luck. Very bad luck. Something, and, and then we need the Jets to win and the uh, Bills to win. Something bad. I, just, I hate to see something bad happen. You know, you've been saying the Steelers were garbage. They were, they were this. Now all of a sudden, Oh, yes, they're going to make the playoffs. Yes, they're going to do this. Shut up. Just, just keep it on the dog. Coach, 
Coach, you being a Grinch right now. But anyway, uh, I went to Steelers. Uh, I hate to be one of the guys Coach talking about, but no, it's not about anybody on here. It's not about oh, okay. here. I'm talking about all them other people. Yeah. I feel you. I feel, but it's the Steelers, Coach. I mean, once we see that y'all playing for something, because it's just, it's just a tradition, because we know the type of coach you have, and we know the type of tradition that the Steelers have. Yeah, y'all start off bad, but it's like once we see Pittsburgh is picking it out. We trust y'all more than some of these other poo-poo teams, so that's kind of what you're getting right now. And I trust them, too, more than some of these other poo-poo teams. I'm oh, sorry, Rick. Pittsburgh. 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 Yeah. Sorry, Rick. Yeah. Steelers. Okay, Steelers. on to the next thing. We got Cowboys versus Commanders. Who you got, Rick? Uh, oh, it's on me. Uh, Cowboys. Uh, Ron Rivera don't ruin this team, ruin this season. I know Dallas ain't got much to play for, but they probably, I mean, <laughs> the way the, the quarterback situation in Washington, I don't know who he's starting. Dallas probably wouldn't even have to play half their guys. They probably still could get a win. You could probably put Cooper Rush out there for a half of the game and, and get a win. I just think it's over with for the commanders and the Cowboys are sitting pretty. They'll play their starter for the half and then let Cooper Rush finish it off. Cowboys. Amani. Cowboys. I'm going to Cowboys too since the Eagles might uh, got a game too. Uh, don't expect the Cowboys to go to the bench because if the Cowboys win, Eagles lose, Cowboys win the division. So, Cowboys. Coach, who you got? Cowboys, I hope they win and the Eagles lose because I want the fall to be sweet when the Cowboys lose their first playoff game and don't do nothing. <laughs> All right, the Monty Patriots are the Bills. Bills. All right, Imani just giving us one word answers. I'm yeah, he's lying, man. Josh <laughs> Allen, the Patriots, they had a decent season, but they'll come up short going to the playoffs. Coach, you got? Bills, go Josh Allen. I need my fantasy points. Well, the season's over, Coach. No, it's not. Not yet. Unless, unless you're in another league. In another All right. league. All right, go ahead. Coach, uh, Greg, who you got? Uh, Bills, I told these Bills fans that y'all better bring it now. Your you guys going to be okay, so you can go out on that field and that whatever you were going to do to the Bengals, do it to the Patriots and keep the Steelers alive. So beat the Patriots. So go ahead, Bills. Go ahead and knock the Patriots off and get ready for the playoffs. Lions versus Packers on me. Pete Rogers got the team on fire, playing good ball. Give me the Packers. Beat the Lions. Lions, way to play, but your season's over. Uh, coach, you got – Packers, I feel so sorry for the Lions. You're doing so well, and then you don't get the playoffs again. So sad. Red. Well, you can't lose to Carolina in a big game. That's what happened to the Lions. That Carolina loss is going to – that pretty much killed this season. And now you're going to Green Bay for a must win that you're not going to get. Skeet got these boys playing, got them believing. Once Skeet got his team believing, it's over with. Packers. I'm on it. Packers. Giants and Eagles. Who you got, Coach? Uh, Eagle to Jalen Hurts play. We gotta make a definitive pick. <laughs> who you Eagles. got? Eagles. Am I, I mean, Red, who you got? I got the Eagles because the Giants not gonna be playing anybody. They 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 position is, is put. You can't get higher or lower. So I think Dayball is gonna Dayball is gonna rest his guys, and the Eagles are probably gonna win by default. Who you got, Amani? Eagles. And I'm going to make it unanimous, especially because of what Red just talked about, how the Giants' position is always established, so there's no need to get anybody hurt. On to the last game, Ravens versus Bengals. Red, who you got? You know, I got baby. I ride with Joe Cool, Joe Burrow. This daytime of the year, it is late in the season, and this is when Joe Burrow shines. Bengals. Armani. Bengals. Same here with me. Joe Burrow shines over the Ravens. Then he's not going to let no backup quarterback steal his playoff position. Coach, who you got? I hope they tie. <laughs> Bengals. Coach, you got to pick one. Bengals. Thank you. All right, my cousin showing that Cincinnati love for my Bengals going to the Super Bowl. They might. All right. That ends our pick on bit One quick thing. What do y'all think about the Lamar Jackson situation? Should he play? No. He'll sit out the rest of the season and get paid. Get paid. I'm with you. Get paid. Shouldn't, shouldn't play no more this season, right? Correct. Everybody else feel that way? Our money coach? Uh, yeah, he might as well. But who's going to pay him? 
I hope the Falcons not. I know who got the money to pay him. No, <laughs> no, Armani, no. <laughs> All right, Justin. He said no. All right, real quick. Please, no. You like to do what, when, where, how? Who got it first? Uh, I do it. NBA, you got the right to test Luka Doncic. How do you have a big game? Just like you did Donovan Mitchell. How do you have his 70 point game? You decide to test him like he's been doing something wrong, but he's been playing good all year. Test Luka and right. put him on the, uh, under the needle or whatever you're going to do to him. All right, who wants at it next? Who has the right to do what, when, where, and how? I'll go. Uh, UGA basketball, good job after 14 games this season. 11 and 3, you got the right to keep it going against Florida today at 1 o'clock, which probably just started. I am loving it. I need some positive basketball in the state of Georgia. And if the Hawks ain't going to do it, if the Tech ain't going to do it, well, clear it up to my Bulldogs, baby. That's right, 11-3 and three after 14 games, and we going for more. We going for that tournament this year. UGA. Who has the right to do what, when, where, how? Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> Some of the sisters, y'all have the right to at least go on a little game winning streak so we can move up a little bit in the standards. I mean, you know, you got the Nets up there. I mean, they're, they're playing phenomenal basketball, but, I mean, we just – we got to keep going. We got to keep pushing – keep pushing it. We need to try and win something the next few years. Right. UGA football, you have the right to add to Amani's bitterness. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give him some more headache pain medicine. By oh, the national championship on Monday night. That's what y'all have the right to do to make Armani even bitter more and more each day. Yes, yes, yes. Rev, you do know I picked y'all to win. Win. You, you do know I picked y'all to win the game. You right? picked us, but you don't want us to win. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm funny. Everybody is seeing through your BS. I don't right know now. why y'all think, man. Y'all are not Auburn and LSU. I don't hate Georgia. Oh so, man. You ask, ask the Rev Night crew that. I bet you they, they'll say you do. You hate these chips that the Georgia about to win. But, you hate this legacy, this destiny, this greatness, man. Y'all turns are just jealous. Armani, hey, y'all, we're going to have a three-man cast next week. I'm sure Armani going to have something to do with the kids next week. <laughs> I don't have my kids on the weekends. Uh, on, thanks, man. everybody. For okay, well, be up here. Be better morning. here. We'll see you next week. I think you, you, you have the right to represent all Christians at the MLP 10th Paul, my Armani, this is for you, Armani. Right here. UJ. Thank y'all, everybody, watching episode 264. We'll be back episode 265 next week, Saturday, 11 a.m. Red and Red Sports Show on Facebook. I'm trying I'm trying to point to our money's window over here. <laughs> Holla, John. Have a great week. I see you on Facebook, our money. Don't run. <laughs> I picked y'all to win, crazy. <laughs>